So how do we protect the systems? A lot of how you protect corporate systems is very similar to how you protect your individual systems just on a larger scale. Firewalls, antivirus or internet security software, understanding and setting them up to do the appropriate thing when something is discovered. You don't want uh, a whole lot of uh, free exchange of files uh, through anything outside the network by you know thumb drives detachable media things like that passwords uh, well you do want to have strong passwords uh, and I know you've seen that we have to change our passwords in our organization fairly frequently that actually is not considered one of the stronger password controls uh, because it ends up resulting in us generally coming up with weaker passwords because we have to remember that changed password so, uh, every so often. So there are lots of ways to create strong passwords in general. The rule is the longer the password is, the stronger it is. That's the number one strength indicator of your password. Insider abuse, like we mentioned earlier, the disgruntled employee, that's still one of the top threats. All right, so top management support, again, walking the walk at the top, that tone at the top plays a big role in helping to set the example for behavior regarding information security, safe computing, if you will, and so forth. And uh, again, spending some time on a regular basis spreading the word for organizations and making sure that the organization has good protection measures in place for some of the common uh, approaches to abusing systems. So you want to make sure that these controls are implemented so management should uh, be a, play a role in that and then the internal audit and the external auditor teams will uh, also review them from time to time. Ironically, identifying computer criminals isn't very easy. Uh, certainly not as easy as identifying most other types of criminals. They generally do not have uh, necessarily any criminal backgrounds. There's very little. They don't necessarily have to have a highly technical background. Uh, gender used to be a deal, but uh, women have made great headway in committing computer crime, and uh, you're pretty much equal with men. Now, education levels uh, don't make much difference in the instance of crime, although the higher the education level, generally the higher, uh, way higher the dollar value of the fraudulent activity is. Age, not a huge um, indicator there either. So physical security can still play a role there. There is a whole field of forensic accounting that is uh, actually exploding uh, because of the need to investigate and uh, try and lock down computer systems, um, uh, make them safer. All right, so when it comes to employee fraud, uh, we've got uh, what we call red flags of uh, fraud. And uh, those of you who have had audit may have uh, discussed these uh, in the past, but certainly anytime you find weird accounting irregularities, there's something that's a possibility there. Uh, if you have internal control weaknesses, known internal control weaknesses, uh, those are areas you, you might want to check to make sure they're not being taken advantage of. Uh, other unreasonable anomalies. And then from an individual level, you might see lifestyle changes, uh, behavioral changes. Someone who was generally kind of kept to themselves all of a sudden is boisterous, uh, uh, full of uh, confidence, maybe, and just has become, uh, uh, you know, a spendthrift. Or vice versa. Sometimes people get a little bit uh, nervous and they go from outgoing to becoming more withdrawn because they don't want to draw attention to themselves. Obviously, someone with financial difficulties, if they've had trouble making their mortgage payments or they've taken out second or third mortgages, uh, that could be an issue. Close too close associations with business partners, either customers or vendors, if they're overly protective of what they do and kind of want to throw their shoulder over their work and never take, let you take a look at it, if they don't take vacations, if they work weird hours, 
uh, if there are family problems going on, if they're wheeler, that wheeler dealer attitude, if all of a sudden they come in with a new Bentley and are, you know, smoking fancy cigars and uh, buying uh, expensive things. Now, none of these by itself or even in conjunction with one another is proof of fraud. They're basically just indicators that have proven effective in the past at identifying likely fraudsters. And it could be that, you know, the guy's aunt left him a lot of money, so he went out and bought that new Bentley. So there, there could be a perfectly reasonable explanation.